Many organizations have migrated to the cloud and are storing their data in data lakes on AWS to empower their business. But without carefully planning your architecture of your data sets, you may be unhappy with your query performance and paying higher data storage costs than you need to. Is it possible to reduce our storage costs but get better query performance at the same time? Hi, I'm Adriano. I'm AWS certified with a data and analytics specialty, and here are my three tips to optimize your data lake to get the most out of your data. These tips will be focused on data optimization techniques within S3. Tip number one, use a columnar storage format. Use a columnar data format where possible when storing your data in S3. Yes, I know we're all comfortable with CSV files. Everyone understands how to read them and they can be easily opened on your laptop in Microsoft Excel. But when you're dealing with big data, columnar formats improve performance by reducing the data scan during queries. An example of popular storage formats are Parquet and ORC. However, if you're building a data lake with Python as your programming language, Parquet seems to be a more popular choice as there's more support with Python libraries and applications. When you query your data, you are commonly only retrieving a few columns out of what could be hundreds of columns in your dataset. Columnar file formats allow big data processing engines like AWS Athena to retrieve only the data from the columns that are requested. So my example over here, I have my data set stored in Parquet. When I select all the records in Athena, as you can see, there's over 384 megabytes of data was scanned. This was the entire data set and it took over one minute to complete. However, if I was only interested in one column of the columns to query, because my data is stored in Parquet, I can just modify my SQL query to query out the license number. And as you can see here, only 4.92 megabytes of data was scanned and my query only took 24 seconds. AWS Athena didn't have to query the other columns unnecessarily, which resulted in a better performance and savings in compute costs for me. So how do you know if your data is using a columnar storage format in S3? Well, you can tell by the extension of your files in S3 and under the type, it will tell you the data type of your file. As you can see here, both are indicating that my data is parquet in my S3 bucket. Now, if you have no idea where to start on how to read and write columnar storage to your data lake in AWS, check out my tutorials in the description below. All right, moving on to tip number two, apply compression to your files. There are many file compressions that can be applied to your data sets such as gzip, bzip, lzo, and snappy. These compressions reduce your file size on your data sets, which will save you cost in storage and increase query performance. Many AWS services support writing data with these compressions. For example, in AWS Glue, when writing your data to a target, you have the option to choose three different compressions. So it is not a lot of extra effort to implement compression on your data sets. Just a small change when writing your data can have a huge implication in costs and savings as your data grows. Tip number three, partitioning your data. By partitioning your data, you can reduce the amount of data scanned by each query thus improving performance and reducing cost. It's important to understand your data to figure out the best partitioning strategy. You can monitor query behavior to find columns frequently used in filters and group by statements. You can select these columns for partitioning for best results. You can partition your data by any column, but a common practice that I see is to partition your data based on time, which often leads to multi-level partitioning schemes. For example, if your data is coming in every day, you might decide to partition by year, month, and day. If your data is being queried by another variable such as business groups or customers, for example, you might also consider partitioning by business group ID and customer ID columns in your data. One thing that is important to note is to try to avoid over partitioning, as it can lead to added overhead in smaller files in your S3 bucket, which can be detrimental to performance. So it's all about striking the right balance. Referring to the example of partitioning by year, month, and day earlier, this partitioning scheme might be too coarse if most of the queries are filtering only by year. Partitioning is use case dependent and might even be fluid in your organization depending on the data set, and a one size may not fit all use cases. Now, all three of these tips can be combined together to get the best cost savings and best performance boost. So for example, by converting your CSV data to Parquet's columnar format, compressing it and partitioning it, you save money and reap the rewards of better performance. The following table created by Thomas Spicer in his article published in Medium titled Apache Parquet, How to Be a Hero with Open Source Columnar Data Format, compares the size and query cost savings of a CSV to a Parquet file format. And as you can see here, it's pretty impressive. Not only was he able to reduce a one terabyte size data set to 130 gigabytes, but also able to reduce the query time and make it 34 times faster and a massive cost savings of over 99.7%. 
It's never a bad time to review your data storage strategies on AWS S3 to see if there are optimizations that can be made when you are working with big data. Thanks so much for watching, and if you learned something or think this video would be helpful for others, please hit that like button. If you're interested in more videos related to data engineering and AWS, please consider subscribing. See you next time.